Uh, my case, uh, first of all, I have nothing to uh, declare. But yes. Uh, our case is a 21-year-old male patient, and he was referred to our home institution with a diagnosis of articulation. And in his relevant physical examination, there was significant uh, blood pressure difference between the upper and lower limbs. And also, we noticed a brachial femoral, brachial to femoral pass delay. And on his transtoracic echocardiography, there was a significant uh, left ventricle hypertrophy, but there was no associated cardiac abnormalities. Uh, Preprocedural imaging just demonstrated that the coarctation zone was really close to the left subclavian artery, but, and also showed there was grid collaterals and as well as the dilated subclavian artery ostium. We discussed the patient with our heart team, and after taking the consent of the patient, we decided to go through with the treatment of the coarctation with percutaneous intervention. Uh, we started our uh, pro procedure with the right radial artery axis, and we advanced a five-French pigtail cat to the arc aorta. And then uh, procedural measurements just demonstrated the proximal neck of the coarctation zone was 23.6 millimeters, and this was the measurement just uh, taken from just distal to the left subclavian artery. And distal neck of the coarctation zone was measured as 24.8, and arcus aorta was a bit narrower, and it was 18, around 18 millimeters, and the length of the coarctation zone was 28 millimeters. Uh, before proceeding the procedure, we have a few issues to take under consideration. And first, of, first, uh, the first consideration was to use a graft or a non-graft stand. Although in our home institution we had both at our disposal, uh, we actually didn't want to compromise the left uh, subclavian artery flow. So we preferred a non-graft stand. And the second issue was uh, the alignment edge of distal edge of the stand and where to align it. Uh, there was two options. The arc sort of were, were, was a bit narrower, but uh, and the, uh, the proximal neck of the coarctation zone was really short. But uh, since the distal neck, since there was a significant uh, discrepancy uh, between the arcus aorta and the distal neck of the coarctation zone, uh, we preferred to deploy it to the proximal neck of the coarctation zone, even if it was really short. Uh, we uh, proceeded the procedure with uh, right common femoral artery puncture, and we just inserted a proglide. And then we passed the lesion with a stiff angled uh, glide wire, and we changed it with a backup Meyer guide, wi guide wire with the aid of a five French multipurpose catheter. And then we introduced the 18 frame sheet and just beyond to the coarctation zone. As I mentioned before, the, since, there was, since the proximal landing zone of the stent was really short and uh, just we didn't want to ex extend the stent to the arcus, uh, we preferred a different technique which was called, which we can call uh, a wide skirting technique. And thus we uh, proceeded with the second pack of mire which was just uh, advanced to the left subclavian artery. And then on the uh, first backup mire, we just loaded a NUMET balloon in balloon, which, uh, which had an outer diameter 4 by 24. And on the second backup mire, which was going to left subclavian, we used, we loaded a peripheral balloon. As you can see, we uh, just uh, preferred a non graft stand, and its name was Andra stand, and we manually mounted it, these both parallel balloon catheters. You can uh, easily notice that the Y shape of the balloon catheters and the guide wires, and at the right hand side, you can easily see the uh, fluoroscopic view of the uh, Y skirting technique. Uh, and then we carefully just unsheathed the uh, stent, uh, and we took a last image to optimize the place of the stent. And then first we consecutively inflated the inner and the outer balloon of the NUMET balloon in balloon catheter, and then we, uh, uh, we flared the ostium of the left subclavian artery with the aforementioned peripheral balloon. 
And then before uh, ending up the procedure, we did a final kissing at the left-hand side of the slide. And then we took our last images. And these are the last DSA images of the patient. And we ended up the procedure without any complication and with no residual gradient. Thank you. Very innovative. Great case, Ali. Um, maybe time for one question. As I understand this, usually uh, there's tent grafts are commonly used at this location. Yes. So do you have any evidence for using non-stent grafts, and what, are the, what is the patency for these things? Yes, uh, you're right. An instant restenosis rates of the non-graft stents are a bit higher, than, uh, but the pseudoaneurysm formation rates for the graft stents are a bit higher. Uh, but we really had the same second thought after the procedure. We could have used a graft stand, and we had already we already had it at our disposal. But uh, to not compromise the left subclavian flow, we did uh, choose the non-graft stand. This was the point. How about the uh, antiplatelet? How long you use this long Yes, that's a great dwelling? question. Uh, uh, in our home institution, we usually give dual antiplatelet therapy at least one month and then proceed with only aspirin. Long-term monitoring, will you just go based on symptoms or will you do imaging to see how? Yes, uh, we are planning it at the six month uh, with the CTA. Great, great, thank you. Good job.